All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. Last episode was on Doctor Who. Now we're going to talk Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we're going to talk about Star Wars and the significance of Mark Hamill and Luke Skywalker. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about Star Wars tonight. We talked about Doctor Who in the last episode. Yes, I am a bit of a geek for these science fiction shows. I guess I sort of grew up on uh, things like Doctor Who and Star Wars when I was a kid. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, in the 70s, these shows were very positive. They were filled with uh, very powerful myths. And if you study people like Carl Jung and, um, you know, uh, people like Julius Evola and René Gounon, you see that these myths... Um, even if they're in science fiction, um, you know, are very, very powerful. And um, I think that's why the globalists are all over them right now, trying to turn them white and to destroy them. So, you know, let's talk about uh, Star Wars. Um, you know, everyone's noticed ever since George Lucas sold, um, um, you know, the uh, franchise of Star Wars to Bob Iger, the Jewish uh, head of Disney, uh, there's been a change in the way that the show has, uh, uh, the films and the TV shows that have come out have gone. Uh, obviously they've gone into full production mode, whereas George Lucas would take his time with things, so they, they just begin to, they'll do a new series every year, there'll be a new Star Wars show, and there's a new movie normally every two or three years. And, uh, the first thing they did was to make the, uh, the sequels. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, they chose the wrong people. They chose J.J. Uh, Abrams, uh, who's never made a good film in his life. He does sort of know how to put together a giant blockbuster, but he's never made a good one. He, he kind of was involved in, in Star Trek. He did a couple of Star Trek films, and, you know, they weren't very good. They are okay, you know, kind of passable, I guess, but they weren't great. And then, you know, he's done some other things that are hardly worth mentioning. And uh, then he came along and did The Force Awakens. And, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't h instantly hate The Force Awakens. Awakens, though I didn't really like the main characters. The lead character was a woman called Ray. Uh, who cares? Uh, then there was like a black character who looked like he was the main character, but really he was just sort of a sidekick, I guess, called Finn. And then there was a sort of Mexican dude, uh, um, you know, who uh, sort of played, um, I think, uh, a pilot called Poe. And they were the three main characters, but they brought back Han Solo, they brought back Princess Leia, and, you know, they, they were okay, uh, and uh, they brought in a new character, Kylo Ren, as a kind of new villain, and he was played by Adam Driver, who is a great actor, so his arc was, wasn't bad in the first film, um, you know, and that he had these issues with his father, and that he'd rebelled, and I, I could sort of relate to all that stuff, and I thought that was okay, but then Luke Skywalker was sort of kept out of the first film, and then the first film was about Rey you know, finding, you know, making her way almost like a road movie to find Luke, to find, you know, Luke Skywalker, uh, Mark Hamill, and he appeared at the end of the film. And I think, okay, well, okay. So I guess all the action with Mark Hamill's character is going to happen in part, you know, the next part, the next film, which was uh, The Last Jedi, right? So it was directed by Ryan Johnson. Now, in this film, you would think, after setting up, you know, Luke Skywalker's character, that he, you know, he, he's sort of in exile or whatever, that he's going to be coaxed, you know, I guess, a la you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, to rejoin the fight and, you know, come back and, um, you know, bravely uh, go up against the, the new version of the Empire, and you know. But basically, um, you know, and even Mark Hamill, who is a super liberal and super woke uh, actor, he complained about it himself. Luke was portrayed as essentially a coward who was hiding out on this um, bizarre island in the middle of the, you know, nowhere. And, uh, you know, all these friends are in trouble and he's not the least bit interested in going to help them. And he said when he made that film, he said uh, it just didn't feel like the character of Luke Skywalker, which, of course, it wasn't. It isn't. You know, it was very important because the character of Luke Skywalker in the original, um, you know, Star Wars movies, he was, you know, almost like the archetype of the hero. You know, Joseph Campbell, the hero of a thousand faces. And, you know, for my generation anyway, he was like a, a symbol for, you know, that you will stand up individually and fight evil, even if it takes your own life and you'll show tremendous bravery and things like this. It was a, a, a very edifying, uplifting myth for people of my generation. So it's very, very important that the Jews who run um, Disney and the globalists uh, all around the globe who detest this, who are essentially more aligned with the Sith, which is the character of Palpatine, who is the evil um, you know, Lord of the Galaxy who controls things from behind the scenes uh, and creates wars. The Phantom Menace covers all that. He's involved in both sides and making everybody fight. And then, you know, through all this chaos, 
um, this evil Sith Lord manages to take over the universe. That was the what happened in the prequels, essentially. And, uh, sorry, yeah, in the prequels. Then you've got the canon uh, first, uh, the middle three, and then you've got these sequels. Um, so, you know, it's extraordinary what they, what they did, and they really wanted to destroy the myth of Luke Skywalker, and that's exactly what they did. And, you know, the fan base just went crazy. I mean, I, don't, I haven't met any Star Wars fans who like, um, you know, Episode Eight. Um, you know, people thought, well, Episode Seven, if it went somewhere good in Episode Eight, but it didn't. And then Episode Nine was a complete dog's breakfast, where they just basically tried to try up the loose ends. And what's funny is, is it turned because we all thought that Rey was maybe the daughter of Luke Skywalker, maybe the daughter of Han Solo. No, she's the daughter of Palpatine, the e most evil character in the whole um, Star Wars universe. So, in other words, the character that George Lucas had um, created to almost summarise um, great universal evil, they're the ones that the people at Disney and the globalists related to, and in the end, she won the day. Her character wins and becomes... She names herself Skywalker. She takes the name Skywalker. So it's essentially the triumph of evil, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what they've done. And that's because, you know... These people, these globalists, they know the power of myth. And that's why Mark Hamill is significant as well. And Mark Hamill recently went and um, supported Joe Biden. You know, I don't know what they have on him, whether he's been to Epstein Island, whether he's just been bribed, I don't know. But it's clear that Mark Hamill in his real life has gone over to the dark side, ladies and gentlemen, and, you know, just supports Biden and, um, you know, supports every liberal cause and... Um, you know, I guess after 40, 45 years, uh, Hollywood has had a chance to corrupt him, you know, because it's not the Mark Hamill we remember, you know, who we saw staring out into space as a great hero, um, you know, uh, for a whole generation in the original Star Wars. So this perversion of our myths is exactly what these motherfucking cunts are all about. And that's what they're doing with fucking Star Wars. That's what they're doing with fucking Star Trek and fucking Doctor Who. They're fucking it all up because they want you to have no future. They want you to have no myths that mean anything because they want to destroy everything. And that's their agenda. They are nothing but nihilistic evil, i.e. the Sith.